Yeah, Dave, I'm curious. Have you set you know, your pitching plans yet for the next couple of days? So our plan would definitely to be to throw Smith on Thursday. Today, we're just getting ready to go work out. I'd probably be able to announce that in two or three hours. We've just got to double check on a couple of things as far as making sure everybody's okay. And, and then we'll have our pitcher for tomorrow. So I guess as the play with Smith going tomorrow, you kind of want to keep everybody on schedule like they have been the last last week or so? Well, you know, not necessarily, <clears throat> excuse me, looking forward to the next weekend because there's, you know, we don't know who we're going to play and, and who we're going to pitch. All the guys are going to have plenty of rest that we'll be able to make that decision um, after, after the regional is, you know, the selection committee, you know, lets us know who we're going to play. So, uh, but we will go Smith in game two and and I'm not sure who hopefully get a chance to play game three and more. So we'll, we'll try to get some guys some work. Tom. <clears throat> Sorry, it took me a second to unmute there. Hey, um, so will all the pitchers be more like, you know, on some pretty good – Pitch counts, and you only want to use, you know, Tiger, Smith, and Holland once, and maybe McIntyre once. Is that kind of the plan? Um, probably with the first few guys, but with, with McIntyre, probably not so much. I mean, he's a guy that, that we feel like um, he wants to pitch more. And, you know, if we needed to use him game one, game three, game four, maybe not game four, but whatever, you know, a couple times for sure. Uh get him out there and let him go a little bit. Just like the other day, we could have left him in. He was feeling great. He was actually throwing just as well as he did the first ball game he pitched, and he felt great. Uh, didn't want to come out of the game, and if it had been a different situation, we wouldn't have taken him out. So so the general thought is you guys are in good position to, you know, get a top eight seed. What's the importance of the tournament for you guys generally? And I know you you like to win every game, but maybe from your pitching standpoint, maybe you don't need to be pitching till Sunday, you know? Yeah, it's uh, – obviously we do want to win. And I guess the importance would be to continue to get these pitchers work, but not too much work, keep them sharp. And then uh, the same with the hitters. You know, they need live at bats, and especially with a couple of guys that have been injured to get those guys in the lineup and – swing the bat and try to get them right. Right. And then um, from a scouting standpoint, you guys go watch uh, Tennessee, Texas A&M today. And if you wouldn't mind, uh, for those of us writing something for your game tomorrow, could you maybe talk a little bit about Tennessee and Texas A&M? It's my last question. Yeah, I mean, we're going to go work out right now, a couple hours, battle the rain a little bit. I think it's hopefully getting out of here and do what we can do. And then uh, – Probably a couple of us will peel off and, and go watch that game a little later. You know, not so much scouting. We played both those teams, three games. We know what they're they're all about. But maybe just to get out of the hotel and go watch one of the teams we're going to play tomorrow. Um, you know, and then – I don't know. What was your, what, what, what are you looking for? What else? What else are you talking? Well, just kind of the general traits of Tennessee and Texas saying, and what do you think of each club basically? Well, I think that, uh, you know, first on Tennessee, you know, after they left our place, they, they heated up pretty good. They maybe lost another game midweek and uh, I don't know, they, they struggled most of the game against Vandy. And then when they, when they tied that thing up in like the ninth beat them in extra innings, they went on a roll. It just kind of, flip the switch and they've been pretty good ever since you know they obviously have they have very good arms they have incredible a couple of incredible bullpen arms that have actually started a little bit as well um you know offensively they they're not the team they were last year because that team was special especially on the offensive end but they have enough pitching to get through the tournament and uh you know i don't know who they're throwing today um but i'm sure whoever they throw tomorrow will be Probably, uh, you know, a little more of a, of a a rotation guy and then probably get back to normal after that. But, you know, they've got to get through A&M. And then A&M's kind of in a little bit of a – they're kind of on the bubble, so to speak. You know, that's the rumor. I think they're probably in. But if they were to lose today, they would be sweating it out for a while, it looks like. So I think they're going to they're gonna use everybody they have to win today. And um, I don't think Tennessee's in that spot at all, obviously. So – 
a and M's has finally started hitting the ball like everybody thought they would. They have so many starters back from last year that that hit the ball well, and they've been scoring a lot of runs. And I think that's the deal. Both teams that were, you know, have an opportunity to play tomorrow, they're scoring, and we're going to have to score with them or do a really good job on the mound. Ellis. Yeah, coach, it's well documented that like success in this tournament doesn't always correlate to the NCAA tournament. But, you know, obviously, what's the balance like for your coaching staff not wanting to just go into this lax of days going still want to get better as a team? Well, that's the message to the team. You know, let's just take care of the, the game we have in front of us. And let's just play good today. And, you know, let's not go backwards. Um, if you lose, you lose. You're losing to a good team. If you win, you're beating a good team. You just want to play good. And. You know, if, if we do that and, and it doesn't go good, you can live with that and get back to, to get back to your to your home base and rest up and get ready for uh, an exciting weekend. And then just, you know, for your team, this is a trip that you guys might end up being on together for almost an entire week or more. You know, just do you think this time where you're together and you're forced to be together for this entire stretch, do you think this is a big, important, you know, time of year for your team to kind of grow together? Yeah, it sure doesn't hurt. You know, I think this team's extremely close and there's probably teams in the past, I would tell you that being together like this, I mean, we left last Wednesday, uh, practiced it in Nashville Wednesday night. So uh, we're, we know we're going to be here at least through Wednesday and and hopefully longer. Um, I think it's I think it's it's good for the guys to be together like this and you know, just they don't have to go to school, worry about school right now. It's more about just getting healthy and, and being a good baseball player and a good teammate. And I, I think it's I think it's going good. And I think it is important. Dylan. Hey, coach, thanks for the time. Uh, just to follow up on the on the A&M Tennessee question, I was wondering if you had a uh, personal preference in who you face. <laughs> There's no way that I could tell you that uh, if I did. Um, and you probably know that, but, uh, yeah, I, uh, pick your poison, right? They're both good. We played them both three times in Fayetteville, beat them three times each. I'm sure whoever we get is They're going to give us their best shot. And, uh, when I saw that we were playing one of those two, I just kind of shook my head and thought, wow, that figures. And, uh, but it's still, it's just baseball, but they're both good. I, I can't really say much more. Thank you. Yeah. Dudley. Uh well well noted that Morris struggled coming, you know, starting the year, but he seems like he's on a really good track right now. How much confidence do you have in him in him and how much better does that make the pitching staff knowing that you have a veteran that uh is pitching well and has pitched in big situations? Yeah, we have a lot of confidence in him, and I think we proved that by bringing him in, you know, when we did this past weekend in some big big situations and and uh you know, having him is, you know, that's big for us. It's just uh, an exp experienced older pitcher that has been in some really tough spots as far as in games and, and handling games. I mean, he's pitched in the College World Series. He's He's been there and done that. So I don't think it, the moment's too big for him. It's just about using his ability to execute pitches, and that's what he's been doing. Whether it's uh, Ben McLaughlin, uh, Holt, some others, I guess, that you call them future starters instead of reserves, talk a little bit about how important they were to being able to, to get a share of the title and, and have the success that you had. We wouldn't have got it without them. I mean, that's obvious. You know, these guys are good baseball players while well, we brought them in here and a little bit older. Um, we needed a little bit of experience, and so we dipped into the – juco ranks and tried to get some guys that were kind of physical big and strong and you know could you know just could get through the season and uh didn't know last fall they're going to be starters or future starters or whatever and uh you know but they accepted their roles and when they got in there they did a great job you know in ben's situation he he was swinging the bat and we were going to get him in there and then he hurt his knee missed another four or five weeks and took him a little bit and then we had an injury and we plugged him in there and man, he helped us win some games, swung the bat really well. And then, you know, with Peyton Holt, I mean, he just kept working on his defense and offense pretty much not in game situations. And when he got the, got the opportunity, I mean, he, he hit the ground running and he looked like an everyday player to me and just, uh, 
you know, the, the defense has been better than I thought it would be because you never know how it's going to go in a real game. And the offense has been amazing. Tough out. Looks like, a, you know, a, a good SEC hitter. So without those two guys, you, you can knock off some wins. That's for sure. Thanks. Courtney. Hey, Dave, just congratulations on SEC Coach of the Year again. Another award for you. How does it feel? It feels great. I appreciate it. Um, you know, it's 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 all about you know how you, how you how we're perceived maybe, and I think we were perceived as the fourth or fifth best team in the West, and we finished a lot higher than that, and and you know we won games that maybe a lot of people didn't think we would because of the the players and the way they they worked, and I got a great staff. You know, we we made some good decisions that that panned out. You know. I think when you look back at the decision about 10 days out from conference, when coach Hobbs and I just discussed how we got to handle this going into league play, it was about winning one game and putting Smith in the bullpen and then give credit to Smith for not fighting us on that. Uh, he was whatever we got to do to win. And yeah, I think that really showed the team how good a teammate he is. And he's really all about winning and, not about his numbers. And usually if you have that approach, you end up getting what he got, what he deserves. First team, all SEC. I mean, that's that team right there. You get on that team, you're probably going to play in the big leagues one day or you're going to be close. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a great feeling, but the, the best feeling to me is knowing that we finished top of the, on top of the West and, and then, you know, getting a piece of the overall championship, which is so hard to get. And uh you know, we were so close to getting it all by ourselves that it's hard to even look back on it because it kind of makes you a little nauseated, honestly. Uh, it's uh, it is a great feeling. I'm just really proud of the players. And last one for me, you talked about the message to the team this week. What's their mindset like after, you know, obviously being on the bus, heading to Hoover, traveling after coming off that Vanderbilt series? You know, it was interesting on the, on the we take two buses here, split the team up a little bit, but the buses was really quiet. You know, it wasn't like you just won a championship. They were really quiet. They're disappointed that we lost. And we just feel like we let them slip away. And uh, probably they probably doing a lot of thinking. I, I think maybe maybe it'll help us down the road because still teams still got a little got definitely got some edge and attitude. Um I think the mindset right now is, man, we gotta get we gotta get our shortstop healthy. We gotta get the pitching lined up and you know, we almost lost Holt on that play as well. I mean, he's a tough kid and very strong. He might have been really hurt and and when they collided, um, doing what, what they do, and that's putting in an incredible effort to try to make a play in a desperate situation where that inning was just going falling apart. And uh but I think they're they're really glad to be here. I think like all of us, we're glad that 10 weekend gauntlet's over with and just kind of catch your breath and now yesterday we had a workout I thought it was very spirited you could tell they wanted to be out there and you know even at the end of you know we lifted the pitchers lifted after their workout and position players lifted and so there was some waiting around and I mean they're throwing the football around running past patterns you know you had managers trying to cover guys they had coaches trying to do things and I'm thinking well this looks fun but man I hope nobody gets hurt uh, you know, I had to slow down a few guys on a few things, but you can just tell they like being out there. They like each other and the mindset's good. I don't know how it's going to go here. I do believe that we'll play well, uh, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to go crazy uh, as far as extending our pitchers to, to try to, to win a game. And uh, I think they know that. Thanks coach. Tom and Hutch, last two questions. We got to go to practice. Tom, you're muted. I'm sorry, you mentioned Bolton for a second. What's his availability, his status? He won't, he won't play tomorrow for sure. Um, you know, they, they've tried to really excel this as far as the treatments, a lot of treatment, keeping it elevated, walked with a boot on it when he wasn't. Now he's not in a boot, and he walked to the bus yesterday. He did not hit her field. I don't think he will today either. Maybe play some catch today. Um, you know, if we're here on Saturday, I think there'd be an opportunity to play, but that's guessing. Um, if he's not ready, like 95% ready, I'm not going to play him. So we'll, we'll see how, how that turns out. You know, the other issue is if, if we have another middle inf inf infielder go down, you might, we'll see who's playing there.
So it'll get interesting if that happens. Would you really like to get Bobby Fouts, maybe a couple of other guys, some innings in this tournament? Yeah, at least at least out there once. And uh, you know, they both have really good arms. I think that you know we're going to need them. We're going to need them. So we we got to really try to get them out there if if if, if it's right. If there's any other question time, I'm, I defer to Andrew here. Yeah, Dave, you mentioned Fouch and Bybee there, but Ledbetter, the last time out, he gave you four scoreless in a midweek game. Just Is he a guy that might be uh, seen him out this week? Yeah, and he's more of a long guy for us, I think. So, uh, you know, if we play long enough or depending on the situation, he's – I think he's he's ready to roll. You know, he's so to speak, he's foaming at the mouth. He wants the ball. So we'll we'll see if we can work that out. Coach, appreciate your time. Okay.